What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of ENA. We got time. We have another interview for y'all. Special guest Jalen Acton, uh, current TFL player. Go ahead and say what's up to the people, man. Yo, what's up? My name's uh, Jalen Acklin, wide receiver for the Ottawa Red Blacks from Mountain View, Missouri, in the Ozarks. Hey, I'm glad you, you said the name of the team because I did not want to butcher it. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> yeah, I know. Canada has some weird names with their team sometimes. Uh, all right. Well, um, what's funny is I was just going through all my notes and I was just looking. Uh, this is the first time I actually interviewed somebody younger than me, so this is a, a, a first for me. This is kind of crazy because. I'm only like two two months older than you. Oh, for real? Yeah, I, I'm a young gun, honestly. <laughs> hey, hey, me and you both. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and get into it, man. Uh, you know, six. Uh, I was reading your profile. Six two. They got you listed as one one ninety. Uh, very prototypical size. But uh, let's just take it back real quick. In high school, did you always play receiver, or did you play another position? Yeah, no, nah, I played quarterback uh, ever since I was, like, second grade, third grade. Um, my dad was a coach in my high school, so he uh, he always wanted me to play quarterback. And I went to, like, a really, really small school. I only graduated, like, 70 kids. So, uh, so yeah, we didn't have a quarterback to throw to me, so I just played quarterback. And just, I really just ran it, honestly. <laughs> I wasn't that great of a thrower. Okay, okay. So when did the transition from quarterback – to uh, receiver start? In college. I went to Western Illinois, uh, oh. FCS school. Um, it's in the Missouri Valley Conference with, like, North Dakota State and uh, South Dakota, all okay. those teams. Uh, yeah, that was my first time playing wide receiver. Um, took me three years. I didn't play my first three years in college. Uh, I played my senior year, though, like, started. And, yeah, uh, uh, I, yeah, I was looking, awesome yeah, I was looking at the numbers of – Eighty four catches, over a thousand yards, ten touchdowns. Yeah, you really uh you really performed. Um who when you got to college and you transferred from quarterback to wide receiver, what guys did you watch on film? Obviously, you know, there's guys in the locker room who, who will help you throughout the way. But what guys did you see in the NFL or C F L or just uh people in general that helped you and you tried to model your play after? Yeah, that, that's actually a good question. Um, you know, I would say, like, my freshman year, the one that people always compared me to was, like, Jordy Nelson. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I'm not trying to sound, like, uh, self-centered or anything. I just kind of wanted to add my own, like, little little thing to it. Like, I, don't, I didn't want to be, like, a prototypical, like, white wide receiver, like, possession guy because I always thought that I was – you know, fast and athletic, and you know that's what's carried me so far. Is that I am, I'm so confident in myself that uh, I try not to be like anyone else. But if I ha- ever had to say like who, like John Harbaugh said, I reminded him of Jordy Nelson. So I guess I'd say I'd say Jordy would be my biggest, my one that I strive to be like. Okay, okay, yeah. Because I was looking at uh, I was looking at a lot of your film. A lot of your catches now, just off of where you're catching the ball. This isn't, you know, this isn't anything to do with route running or anything like that. In my opinion, I compare you more of, more to like I'm only saying this because I'm a Giants fan, like a Sterling Shepard or like a G. Oh yeah. Because because those guys, now granted, you're taller than those guys, but I see a lot of your highlights are in traffic, you know, across the middle something like that. I don't want to necessarily say slot receiver, but from your tape, I watch, you have a lot of heavy catch in traffic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you there. And it's it's weird because, like, a lot of scouts and stuff didn't think I was a slot receiver because I'm 6'2". So, mm-hmm. like, but, I mean, my route running, like, I know my weaknesses. My route running is good, but it's not going to be, like, you know, uh, trying to make it, like, Antonio Brown good in, like, his prime. Uh, but yeah, I would say my main quality is be catching in traffic, like you said, and I would say toughness. Uh, not talking myself up, but like I don't, I've never missed a football game in my life, so uh, you know, kind of, I'm trying to think. Heinz Wardish, uh, mix in with a little bit of Sterling Shepard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I like that. Okay. So let's fast forward a little bit. 
So you have your breakout year at Western Illinois. Uh, what, what's going through your mind going into, uh, I guess, the draft? And, and you know, the, were you uh, – you guys have a pro day, right? Yeah, yeah, we got we got a pro day. It's, it's not very big or nothing, though. There's like two or three teams there. Okay. Um, so you do your pro day. I assume you do good. You know, what's going through your mind from, let's say, pro day to draft? Because, like you said, coming from a – a very small school, you know, you did have a breakout year, but, you know, there's hundreds of receivers every year. So what was your mental at after your pro day going into the draft? Like what what, did, what were your expectations or what did you think was going to happen? Uh, Man, you're asking a lot of good questions. Uh, You know, back then, if you would ask me, like I, I always thought that I was going to, wherever I went, like I, I'd do really well. Uh, I kind of thought that in my position, like I wasn't invited to any senior bowls or anything. So I really had nothing to lose and that any mm-hmm. pressure on me. Uh, so I ran like a four, four forty, had a 39 inch vertical. And so everyone was like, dang, like this guy might be actually athletic. And so, yeah, I just really had nothing to lose. I was just looking to make the most of it because not many kids from where I'm from, I don't, if any, uh, have ever signed a pro contract in a in sports so I was just grateful to represent everyone down here and uh you know like I said before I'm pretty I'm confident in myself and I'm not really afraid of failing so I was just going to go out there and just do whatever I got to do and I knew that you know I, I succeed in the end okay so you go undrafted Ravens call explain to me what's that like you know the whole draft's done you know, you, I assume you, you're disappointed. Like you said, you had a good pro day. You have you have some good numbers to back you. You go on Josh with the Ravens call. What was that like? Or uh, also, could you explain to me where you were? Because I've I've interviewed a couple guys and I've heard stories from you know they were in the gym or they were at home cooking or they were you know just doing just the most randomest thing. So t- tell me what the phone call was like and where were you if you remember. Yeah, I was just uh I was at my mom's place just sitting on the sitting on the couch and John Harbaugh called me and he was like, Yeah, man, we want you. Uh you know, that that was cool, like just being able to talk to a guy that I've seen on T V because at the time like I wasn't around um you know, anyone that was on national television or NFL coaches really at all. Uh so yeah, that that was really cool to get to talk to Coach Harbaugh and then him come from his mouth that like he wa- he wanted me so that felt really special and uh yeah my mom was really happy my little brothers uh yeah man I, I, w- I was just chilling at home like waiting to see where anyone they gave me a five thousand dollar signing bonus I was kind of I was kind of hurt because I thought I, I was worth more than that but I mean mm-hmm. at the end of the day I got to I got to sign the the contract for him so that was a good time got you got you okay so you go into training camp, uh, and this is a question I ask, I ask every receiver, every corner, pretty much e- everybody. Who was your toughest matchup in training camp? And as far as uh, corner, and who do you think, in your opinion, helped you the most, or tried to help you the most during your time with the uh, Baltimore Ravens in the receiver room? Okay, uh, Marlon Humphrey was probably the hardest corner. He was good. He has really good feet, really good quickness, and he doesn't make many mistakes. Like, he doesn't fall for double moves. Uh, would say wide receiver-wise, uh, John Brown and Michael Crabtree. Crabtree probably talked to me the most mm-hmm. whenever I was there. Uh, but Brown Brown was really cool to me, too. I think, I think they called him Smoke or something like that. Uh, I don't know if he still plays. He used to play for the Bills after I left Baltimore, but yeah, yeah, those, I, were my, those, those were my two main guys. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, so you go into training camp, you're excited, you know, you, you, you're living the dream pretty much. You get hurt, you get cut. Um, so it's a two-part question. I, I'm sure that was devastating. Explain to me what was uh, the rehab behind it, uh, I tried to look further, more articles into how bad the injury was. I, I couldn't find much more detail, so you can expand on that. But explain 
to me going from getting cut by the Ravens and getting a call to the CFL and, and how that went? Oh, whenever I got cut, I found out on Twitter, actually. I went to go get an MRI on my hip, and I was driving back, and I found out like that. But, but yeah, man, that, that was that was devastating. Uh, you know, like I called my mom crying, like, I just got cut. She was crying. So that wasn't very cool. And, and it sucked because I had to stay up there for, like, two more weeks because I had to figure out what they were going to do with me. But uh, I ended up having hip labrum surgery. Mm-hmm. And on December 27th in 2018, mm-hmm. and then Hamilton uh, called me and asked me to play on February like 12th or something. And I had just got out of surgery, so I didn't know if I was going to be able to get ready for the off season. And then they said, <laughs> they said if I wasn't ready, then I probably they probably wouldn't sign me. So I was like. Well, I'll just sign and see where I'm at, and I'll just try to tough it out. So that's what ended up happening. I was uh, four months out of surgery, I think. I think it was, like, late April. I went up to their mini camp. Is that a normal recovery time, or was yours uh, faster than expected? I think mine was a lot faster than expected. I don't really know very many people who have hip labrum surgery, though. Uh, so I, th- I think the typical recovery time is, like, six months. But mine was, like, I don't know. Four and a half, probably, before I started running. Okay. okay. So it wasn't, like, too, too quick, but, like, you know, I just kind of had to rush things to, to be able to get ready for camp. Okay. Now, going through both camps, and the CFL is, a, uh, is different from the NFL. Uh, I, I don't know a whole lot about it, but the field is wider from my understanding, and you can run up as a receiver uh, before the ball snaps. What? Do you find the training camp easier or harder for the NFL? The reason, why, the reason why I say that is because it's a different set of rules. So do you believe yeah. that the NFL rules are a little bit more strict than the CFL? Like I said, because uh, from what I've seen, you can, you can get a run start in the CFL. The fields are wider, so you have more room to run your routes and stuff like yeah. that. So what – how, how do they compare in your opinion? Uh, I would say CFL is a lot more uh, man. It's it's not it's not more it's not as cutthroat as like the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, but the NFL probably like I didn't get very many reps because like if you're undrafted free agent in the NFL, I got all my reps in special teams pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like in the CFL, I felt like I always like I was always out there. Like, I wasn't always, like, number one, number two. I was, like, fourth string to start. But, like, they have so many guys coming in and out, you know, they have to they have to look at everyone. They can't just have a guy sitting over there because then they'll never know, like, how good I am. Gotcha. But, you know, the league, you got, like, more established guys and, uh, you know, like Crabtree and all those guys. Those guys are going to start really no matter what. Uh, but in the CFL, it's a lot more um, evaluating. So, mm-hmm. so I would say the NFL is – Definitely harder mentally, but the CFL, uh, you know, if you're actually able to play at a pro level, you'll get your chance. So um, I would say it's more demanding physically in the CFL, but if you make plays, like, it's easier. Okay, okay. Um, next next question. You do – you go to Hamilton, and then now you're with this team. So – Explain to me the goals you have coming up uh, for this upcoming season you have for yourself. Uh, you know, for myself would be, uh, like, personal goals I want to get better at is, like, I want to be a better teammate for everyone. Like, I want to be there for people. Cause I feel like sometimes, just like anyone, like, you're just thinking about yourself and, like, how you can make it to the next day. But I'd really like to uh, – you know, become a more of a person that guys can go to in the locker room, trying to get closer to the team. And then second, like I want to be the best receiver that I can be, and I want to do whatever we got to do to win. So whether that be me getting a thousand yards, me getting 500 yards, or me, you know, blocking on run plays, whatever. Uh, that that would be my personal goals. 
just to, to be a better teammate and then really do whatever it takes to win. And I know that's cliche, but well, that's, no. just how, that, that's just how I am. Like, I, I just – I'm out there to win. Like, I don't want to play around. And if, like, I'm going against a guy in practice and I don't think he's a winner, like, I'll fight him because I'm not really about that stuff and I don't got time to be wasting money on the table with people who don't want to be there for everyone else, if, if you feel me there. Yeah, no, no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. All right, uh, second, second to last question. All right, it's third down. All right, you need a conversion. Yeah. What is your go? What is your go-to play? Like, it, it kind of doesn't matter the, the yard, the yardage, or how many yards you need. But like, yeah, the, the like a go-to route. Yeah, what's your go-to route? Ah, uh, man. Uh, you know, honestly, man, I I would just like a jump ball because I think I'm gonna win a fifty fifty ball every single time, like jumping up. Uh, you know, it can be kind of tricky with outs and slants because the DB might be able to play it right if you're going against a really good guy, but whenever it's a jump ball, it's just fifty fifty. So, I, I would say probably just a fifty fifty jump ball, the fade. Okay, I like that. I like that. And uh, the last question I got for you, what is some advice, uh, I, I try and ask everybody, what is some advice, uh, you know, guys who are going through high school or college who, like yourself, came from smaller schools, maybe swap positions, and, you know, uh, just going through going through the grind of it all, what, what's some words of wisdom you, you give to them? Uh. I would say the the biggest thing would be, like I said before, don't be afraid of failure. Um, I feel like me, whenever I was in high school, I was afraid to fail, so I wouldn't get out of my comfort zone. And so I just kind of stayed complacent, like where I was at, I didn't get much better. And uh, you know, I didn't learn until halfway through college that you got to fail to be able to, to succeed. So I was always, like, scared of failing, so I wouldn't ever put myself in positions to do that. Um but you know you got to learn from your L's, and L's are inevitable if you're going to win. That's that's what I'd say. Okay, okay. Hey man, look, I appreciate you for all your time. Uh, I hope I hope things from you this uh, upcoming season. Any uh, last words you got for the people? Anything you got going on? Uh, you know, outside of football, anything working on business wise in your personal life, anything like that you want to promote? Just go ahead. This is your time right now uh, before we close out. No, I ain't got nothing. But I do appreciate you having me on. Uh, you know, any, anytime you want me to talk, I'm always down to, or down to talk ball. So, uh, yeah, just hit me up during the season if you want to catch up, whatever. But I appreciate you, my man. That sounds great. I appreciate you, man. Uh, this has been another episode of ENA. We got time, everybody, and we are out. Thank you again, man. Appreciate it, Alex.